Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at the Wingsung 601 that was very kindly sent to me by Andy. Andy, I appreciate it. What makes this pen so special? Well, comes in a cute box. That's all fun. But for all intents and purposes, this is a Parker 51 Vacuumatic. So it's a Vacuumatic filled pen. Looks like a Parker 51, but it's made in China and it's $16.50 on eBay. Okay? So, I'll show you the pen. Parker 51, basically, right? Looks like it. Same shape, same cap type even has the arrow clip, right? Has the jewel on top, has all that stuff, right? Even has the hooded nib, has an ink window, and it is vacuum filled. Interesting. I will come back to that. So here's what I'm going to do. First of all, I will thank Andy because I appreciate it and I'm sure that a lot of people will be interested in seeing a review of this pen. Second thing, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll do a writing sample, I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, so let's have a look at the Wingsung 601. It comes in this little box. It's a very simple cardboard box, uh, so nothing nothing fancy but, but lovely work. Uh, then we have this rather extensive manual uh, that has the words the words fountain pen in English and uh, beyond that URL that's that's it pretty much. So this is all uh, in Chinese characters which which I can't read but of course there are pictures uh, which are relatively clear I would say and they even have disassembly instructions which are very interesting. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, then there was this little cardboard thing that the pen was clipped onto uh, which is yeah cute right. Uh, and then, of course, you have the actual pen. Now, as I said, the pen, Parker 51, right? Let's be fair. But not just any Parker 51, but a Vacuumatic Parker 51, which is kind of interesting. Also included was this, and that is rather interesting. A little, this looks like a strange contraption, um, in itself a converter, right? Which has been converted, see what I did there, into a tool filled with silicone grease, so a little syringe basically has a little... Oh, oh that, that, that popped with way more noise than I thought it would. Um, so it has a, a rather thickish uh, uh, grease in there and also has this peculiar thing. And I first thought this was just a little piece that you would, they would put on here so that in transit this would not accidentally uh, compress or anything, but actually this is a tool and I will come back to that tool. I'll leave it right here in view so that I won't forget, okay? Let's look at this pen right next to a Lamy Safari, right? Lamy Safari, you can see the two side by side here. So this pen, this uh, Wingsung 601, a little thinner, but not necessarily a whole lot smaller, like shorter, I mean. Okay, so top of the cap, a jewel. Uh, I know that people call it jewel. I know that is not the official term, but I forgot the official term. I am sorry. We have the clip. The clip has the Parker arrow on it, and the clip is uh, rather springy, rather nice to use. We have this nice uh, uh, cap. Looks feels like a, a brushed metal, slightly matte. And then here on the center band, it has two uh, characters, which I am sure stand for Wing Sung, and then six or one. And on the back here it says made in China. This is metal, the body is plastic, and interestingly enough, just like with the Parker Vacuumatic, or sorry, the 51 Vacuumatic, you can take off that blind cap and then you have this little pump. How does this work if you've never used a Vacuumatic? It's rather simple. You take this pen, put it in a bottle of ink, and you push down and let go of this little button a couple of times. It creates a vacuum and every time you let go, it pops back and as it creates that vacuum, it sucks up a little bit of ink up to a certain point because at some point it's full. This little thing is a tool and this tool fits over that assembly, a little bit of fiddling right there. You easily unscrew this, gives a nice bit of grip. I won't do it now because I have ink in here, but trust me, if people want to see that, let me know. I will do a quick video on how to disassemble this pen and, and serve it. It's, it's not that hard. I mean, it's not that hard for me to do, that's no problem. 
Um, but you just unscrew this, very simple, and then you can put it back together like this too. So it's actually rather nice that you get such a complete set uh, for, for a pen of this caliber, I would say. This blind cap screws back in place. Now we have the barrel, and it's a pretty nice fit. There's not an enormous seam or anything. They've, they've done a nice job on this, in my mind. And then you have an ink window, even. So I'm, I'm, I'm just letting the ink flow back. Uh, there, you can, I think you can see it. It's a little hard with the reflection. Let me see if I can... There you go. So you can sort of see through that nice clear ink window, you can see the ink level. And there you go. Now there's ink all the way to the bottom. Section. Section does unscrew. Looks very much like a, a Parker 51. So there's a collector, and there is a little uh, breather tube, there is the feed and there is the nib. And the nib wraps around the feed and this is uh, how it came out. Now, just in case you're wondering, I did take it apart once and I think I should put that feed in a little bit farther, but it, it writes as is. Let me just, yeah, it writes as is, so it's, I think it will be fair for the writing sample. And it, it, it writes now exactly as it wrote before. So, a vacuumatic type fountain pen, right? $16.50, okay, on eBay. That's what I found them for. Whole bunch of colors and finishes available. This is a gray one, but there's other colors, other finishes if you, if you prefer that. And the nib is fine. I could not find another nib. Maybe they are available with other nibs, but I, I could only find a fine nib. And for the record, that $16.50 does include that little uh, converter full of grease and the little tool. So I think it's a, it's a pretty complete package. Let's see how this pen writes. Write. Write. Yes. Just checking to see if I somewhat zoomed in there, but I think I did. Okay. So, the pen posts comfortably, just like a 51. And here we have the Oh, that is a weird W, but... Wing Sung... Uh, six, actually. I wanted to write 51, you see. 601, and uh, I think that's it. I don't think there's any other indications. F, and the ink is Waterman Blue Black. The nib, the, let me rephrase it, the pen writes, I found it actually to be a reliable writer, doesn't run dry very easily, but it's not the world's smoothest nib, it's very simple. Line variation, as always, very careful. Reverse writing, you see there is not a whole lot of line variation possible with this, but you can write upside down. T to be fair, it's a pretty fine nib to begin with, but I would say it goes a grade finer, right? Okay. There you have it. Let's see what I like about it and what I don't like about it. What if I did the rest of the video all like this? Too much, too much zoom, too much zoom. All right, what do I like? What do I not like about the Wing Sun 605? Well, I, I have to be honest, I think there's a lot to like. Um, such as, first of all, I love the fact that you get such a complete set. You get the pen, you get a basically syringe with grease to keep the mechanism working. You get the tool to disassemble the whole thing. 1650. That's not bad. It's affordable. That's another nice thing. In general, it's affordable. Irrespective of the accessories you get along with it, it's pretty affordable. It's a large capacity because that vacuumatic system that draws up quite a bit of ink, so you will actually write with this for quite a while, which is useful which is kind of fun, right? Some people would really love to have a Parker 51 vacuumatic. 
they may not be able to afford one. In that case, this is an option. Because I'll be fair, for all intents and purposes, it's a Parker 51 vacuumatic. It has the filling system. It has the hooded nib. It looks like it. It really does. It's not an imitation with a Lamy clip or something that's out of place. It looks, especially from a distance, it looks like a 51 vacuumatic. So, in that regard, it has a lot going for it. And the final thing that I particularly like is it has an ink window so that you can actually see how much ink you have left, given that you cannot easily unscrew the section to quickly check the amount of ink left in the converter, for example. So that really is not that terrible. Other things I don't like so much. Yes, there are two things. It doesn't feel the exact same way like a Parker 51. It feels a bit cheaper. The cap feels a bit lighter, feels a bit cheaper. The whole pen feels a bit cheaper. But again, if budget is an issue, who cares? If you want to buy an affordable pen to give to a younger person, to give to someone that you think may be interested or may get interested in fountain pens, you could do worse than give them this because I will say this. I flushed it with water, I put in ink, the thing wrote. It didn't stop, it kept writing. I have seen pens that cost a hundred times as much as this, right? And they fail. Or they don't write, or they skip. This pen does not skip, I have to give it that. Final thing I will say, and that's one thing I don't like so much, the nib is not the world's smoothest, but it is rather fine. You could probably use a little bit of micro mesh and maybe smooth it out a little bit. There isn't that much tipping, but there is some tipping it looks like, so yeah, there is some tipping. So you can probably do that. And not everybody likes a super smooth nib. Some people like some feedback. Don't expect a glassy smooth writer. If that's your expectation, it's a realistic expectation. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Me personally, I would rather have a slightly scratchy nib that writes consistently than a perfectly smooth nib that stops, that dries out, that does all kinds of things and that doesn't write properly. But that's just me, right? So in all, I really don't think this is a bad pen. A very kind thank you therefore to Andy for sending me this pen. I appreciate it. I'm sure that everyone else appreciates it too because now I was able to review this pen which is very lovely. And that's all there's to it. Hope this was useful and I'd gladly see you later. Bye-bye.